Spooky. So we met at Jay Graydon's Rose. It was one of these things that you kind of know when you meet somebody. You know, certain people you meet at a at a party or on a vacation, oh, we'll stay in touch. We we raised kids together and oh, stuff, but yeah. along the way, we played music together. We did. You have these all-star bands, Biff Babies. It's world class. <laughs> and it's funny, this record was John and I were going to make a record where I could play guitar. <laughs> and it's sort of... And two old friends went to make a little record in this little studio, and you end up on it. Morrison's up on it. Petrucci, Vi, Jay, Albert. Well, it, you know, there's it's, there's a couple reasons for that. First off, every one of us loves you, and and you've been so generous to us, and and given so much. And you know, anything we can do to give back is just a joy. So you know, it wasn't. I'm sure nobody took a dime for it, you know, not not any of us. Well, everybody but you. Well, that's okay. Cause it's <laughs> just you know, kidding. I nobody don't care. Did. You can't pay me enough money. You've given me too much. Are you happy how it came out? I was happy with what... I did a bunch of passes, and Jay, and Jay put a really good one together. And, you know, I sometimes when you deal with the songs that are potentially could cheese out oh. if you don't do it right... It's like, you know, and so everybody brought their, you know, their game, and you can hear each individual style. Even without knowing who it is, you go, oh, that's got to be, you know, Albert, that's got to be Vi, that's got to be Jay, that's got to be Luke, that's got to be everybody. Yeah. You know, Steve Morrison, he plays like him, and everybody, and, and Petrucci's take on the Disney thing is, is a Grammy Award winning performance. I think you should put it up. It's almost like we didn't really pick the songs. He said, you should do this one, you should do this one. Yeah. You casted the thing. But you picked the right things. At first, I'm going, what am I going to play on this, you know? And then I said, well, I guess I was just supposed to be me. I think you did great, and I loved it. I always thought I was the worst guy on the record. Going, well, you know what, Luke? I, I was one of the early guys on. Luke, well, and you know and that, then all of a sudden, I hear, like, what Petrucci's madness well, Vi, is, Or Vi's Vi, shit. Vi started the snowball fight, okay? <laughs> yeah, he did. And, like, you know what's great about being 60 years old and being in this business? First off, I'm friends with all those guys. I'm fans of all those guys. Uh, and I knew that they, you know, this isn't a, a contest anymore. I'm out of the competition. I mean, I've, I've paid 40 years. Let me ask days. you that question. In high school, even though I know you grew up in such an amazing high school. Well, we were very lucky. My first childhood chum, who was my guitar player, but it was Michael Landau when we were 12 years old. And John Pierce was our bass player, and he lived right around the corner. So before I even got to high school, we were all taking music very seriously in junior high. We had bands writing original songs and healthy competition between two bands. It was, and it was always music. One of the things that I think surprises everybody is when, when you watch great players like you and Vi and, and everybody on the thing, when you watch them play together, how supportive they are of the other person. Sure. Luke, everybody in life has a gift, and some people don't find it. And that's really said. Will you... Absolutely, we're blessed with the gift. Oh, I was given the gift, yeah. How uh, old were you? I always you thought you... I was going to be humor, but you know. <laughs> How old were you I when was... either your parents or you figured out? Oh, I know the exact day. Yeah. Ed Sullivan, Beatles, 64. Luke, I want, want to get to this. When you listen to something that inspires you, at what point do you stop trying to figure the notes out but try and figure out what the mindset and the approach was? That's it. I mean, you can learn the licks if there's something particularly trick. But what I get is like exactly what you said. It's like, what is he thinking about? How much do you practice now? Every day. How Unless much? I'm traveling. But a normal day, how long? I do it in the morning after the kids are dropped off and after I have to do my busy work as a manager. I, I try to put in at least a good 45 minutes to an hour. What does the guitar mean to you? It's given me a purpose in life. It's given me a voice in life. It's able, enabled me to give my family a good life. I've seen the world. I've played with the best musicians. I've been inspired. It's, I don't think people understand how good of friends we all are. Well, that's the thing. Is like we've all socialized together. We've done private events and various permutations of guys. and We all have a, a lot of respect for each other and, and thoroughly enjoy each other's company as well. It's not a competitive, like, Hang, you know, we can talk guitars. A lot of times we talk about everything but guitars. Exactly. Right? So let me do a word association. You can use three or four words. Sure. And I'm going to mention the players on the record. Okay. My, Jimmy love... Cox. Jimmy Cox. Now, here's one of these guys. I have a, I have a thing about keyboard players because I play a little bit. Jimmy Cox, I don't think he's probably ever made a mistake in his life. 
I think that I think that he any style, any song, he could pull out some, you know. Give me a little sweet George Brown. Jay Graydon talks about him. He did there's a piano thing that's really tough, and he he wanted to figure out who it was. And it was Jimmy Cox, it was in B flat. It is the most crazy stuff you've ever heard. I, For I agree. whatever reason, or he may have been in a past life been like Chopin or something. John Ferraro. John un, unsung hero. A guy that works all the time, but you don't hear his name in the drummer polls or where, where he yeah. should be. Because he's, he's, he's the most humble, mild-mannered guy. But when he sits behind the drums, man, it's time. And I come from a land of time. Jeff Ficaro and Simon, all the great drummers, Gad. So I can tell a great drummer can make the band good or terrible. One of the sweetest cats ever. Love him. That's Albert Lee. Big Al, boy, I'll tell you what. I got to know him through you. I knew who he was, of course. And he's a legendary country guy from England, you know, played in Clapton's band and all that. Uh, but when I played with him the first time, I think he was the first one that I played with. Yeah, he was. Me, me and him and then your, you guys. And we were playing stuff, his repertoire. What do you think of his style when you think of it? If it's a Well, I'll tell you what. If you play a song like Country Boy, you better know how to do that. You know, I played bass for 30 years on that song. And if I ever listen to him, I get lost on the stop breaks because I, I become a fan. And so Yeah, he's, he, I, he, I, he I, has I, that thing that that's so good that even the Nashville guys are going, damn. Jay Graydon. Oh, Jay, man. I owe so much to Jay Graydon. It's, you know, he took me under his wing when I was like 18 years old, 19. Taught me how to, you know, get my sound together. Recommended me for gigs whenever there's a... He goes, uh, who should we get on second guitar? He goes, call Luke, man. He goes, oh, this young kid coming up. You got to check him out. He took me under his wing. We hung out. Our humor gelled, work ethic gelled, and we're, he's still one of my closest friends to this day. Okay, Steve Morse. Another alien musician. Once you hear three or four licks, you know who it is. I mean, so with Steve has an interesting vibrato in the way he... He does all the false harmonics and that makes it sound like a pedal steel. And then he can also rip chops and play with Deep Purple. And, and he's the most humble, gracious cat. He, he thinks he's, he's like, oh, man, I'm not, I'm not very good. I'm like, stop it, you're not very good. You know, good. he backed Pavarotti. And he also um, yeah, his played, gut, his he, he classical. played classical guitar in Carnegie Hall. Yes, he did. But, uh, he's accepted as a real guy in that crowd. Okay. Or whatever. Steve Vai. Steveland, my man. I adore this guy. I mean, one of the finest, insane musicians. Forget his guitar playing, how brilliant that is. I mean, I've sat, I did the G3 tour, and I felt like, you know, I was along, I, I was the rodeo clown. You know what I mean? It's like, okay, I'm going on first, and it'll be real obvious. Endless supply of chops. Any, for anybody ever have phrasing like him? He's a musician. Like, he knows the, you know, the third violin part, you know what I mean? Like, he can write things and then do it, and then he never repeats himself. Like, he doesn't, he has a couple of songs that people know, but when you go see his bands, he's always changing bands. And I'll incredible. tell you what, I was at a thing with him this weekend, and he starts singing a random melody, and with one hand, he's writing the notes out as he's singing, yeah. and he's improvising. Yeah. To be able to do something like that is a, a guy that really studied hard from a really young age. And had a gift. And had the gift and used it. But he's still not afraid to get on stage and rock and roll, you know what I mean? Oh, he, there's he's, no question. He's the least musical snob of anybody I know. He's just a good man. Good. John Petrucci. Petrucci is, is another guy that I met through you, you know, who I'd heard about as the new Wonderkin, you know, yeah. Dream Theater and all that. And I love the concept of prog rock like that. Prog rock with a great guitar player like that. So I listened to it, astounded by his ability. And Did he surprise you with the Disney medley, though? That particularly knocked me off the chair. I, and I guarantee, I mark my words right now, that's going to be up for a Grammy for best performance. You know what I believe in this record? I believe that all of your performances are phenomenal, but that particular That one just stuck out of the crowd. That, it's that kind of a metal fatigue. Uh, it's a classic guitar. You know, yeah. We haven't had one of those classic guitar no, songs. It, and, and he could never get away with that on a Dream Theater record. So. How would you like to be remembered as a guitar player? Oh, boy. I think I'm more of a journeyman guitar player. I think I'm a guy that they call they call me to fix stuff and to come up with new parts. And I don't think I'd be remembered as some super flashy guy. I'd like to be remembered as a, a 
a team player, you know, who that gets think, the job done. You always make people sound better. Look, I want to let you know how much I love you. I love you too, man. How much I appreciate you playing on this record. Are you and, kidding? And being there for me. Back. Thank you, Luke. Thank you, pal, for your friendship. Right here.